Praise be the name of our Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, through his Son, who is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Condom in churches. Condom in churches today reflects a generation of onan. So every time or every moment you are using a condom or contraceptives, you are murdering a child. You need to understand. Let this sink in your heart. Let this sink in your soul. Every moment you are using a condom, whether in church or outside, every time, every moment you are using a condom, you are squeezing a child in a, a, a plastic paper. It, it's like you are for, uh, suffocating a baby in a plastic paper every moment you're using a condom you need to understand this deep in your conscience that is what you are doing in the book of exodus 20 verse 13 these are the very words of god thou shall not kill thou shall not kill many people in churches today are misled by their pastors because their pastors lack knowledge and also i believe it's the work of the devil so many people are misled to use condom thinking that using condoms it's an innocent way but what you need to understand is that every time you're using condom you are guilty before a holy god for murdering a child and you are under the wrath of god the wrath of god is upon you and if you will die even right now it is clear you are not right with god and god will cast both your body and your soul in hell anyone who is using condom is a murderer anyone who is using contraceptives is a murderer before a holy god if onan the son of judah was in our generation if we can take onan the son of judah in the book of genesis 38 verse 9 and 10 if we can take onan the son of judah and bring him in our generation then judah he will have used condom if onan the son of uh, judah was in our generation that is what i'm trying to explain by the grace of god he will have used condoms so he is a perfect example to us in our generation today in churches and also outside churches. The book of Genesis 38 verse 9 and 10, the reason why Onan, the son of Judah, is our example today. Uh, the book of Genesis 38 verse 9 to 10 and Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife. His, bro his brother had died. Now he was given the wife of his brother in marriage. So it was a holy marriage that he spilled it on the ground. Lest that he should give to his brother and the thing he did displeased the lord therefore he slew him also i repeat genesis 38 verse 9 to 10 and honor knew that the seed should not be his and it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground he spilled it on the ground the seeds or the semen he spilled them on the ground least that he should give seed to his brother and verse 10 and the thing which he did displeased the lord therefore he slew him also so onan what was he doing he was sleeping with tamar and instead of pouring his semen in tamar he was pouring his semen 
on the ground. This is a clear picture of a sin of masturbation and also a sin of using condoms. The only difference between uh, this generation is that and the generation of Onan is that Onan spilled it on the ground. But this generation are spilling it in this rubber, which are called condoms or these plastic things. Then Onan, the Lord, rats was upon him, the wrath of God was upon him, and the Lord killed him. So the Lord will use the same same measurement that he used upon Onan, he will use it to any soul, whether in church or outside church, any soul who is practicing the sin of Onan, the Lord will use the same measurement, the same punishment that he did upon Onan. So children, what we also need to understand is that children are alive in our loins, in the loins of men, children are alive. So what Onan was doing every time he spilled semen on the ground, he was spilling a child. In the eyes of Onan, it's like he was spilling semen, semen on the ground. But in the eyes of God, he was spilling a child. Yes, Onan was killing a child before God. A child who could be his brothers. And it was through that line of Judah that God was bringing Christ to come and save the world from sin and evil. You can see the evil that Onan was doing. The Lord was looking for a generation so as he can bring Christ to but Onan is spilling the entire generation that the Lord is looking for. So as Christ may come through that generation, but Onan is blocking that generation. We believe that using condom is the same way. Using contraceptives is the same way. We are blocking. We are blocking the plan of God. We are blocking the will of God. We are blocking uh, the, the purposes of God. This is what Onan was doing. And I believe it was the devil. The devil was preventing this. The devil was trying to prevent even the Savior, who is our Lord Jesus Christ, coming to this world and also save this world through the genealogy of Judah. But we see every time we, uh, we use these condoms, every time we are spilling on the ground, we are spilling a generation, whether in masturbation, whether in condoms, whether in con contraceptives, these all are sin. Whether also we are involved in abortions, these are the things that are being practiced in churches and the leaders of the church, which are the pastors, evangelists and teachers, they are just silent. They are, uh, they are not opening, opening their mouths. Maybe they think, okay, this message will offend People, yeah, it is good the message to offend people so as they may repent, but it is worse if we are not offending the people and the people are going in hell because of the same, same sins that we know, the same, same sins that God is showing us. The Bible says that uh, we should, yeah, God is saying that every darkness should be brought to the light and also re rebuked in love. So moment we are covering this darkness, then this is not the heart of God. This is not the heart of God. Condoms are not supposed to be used in church. Condoms are not supposed to be used in the world. Every man should marry. Every woman should be married. Praise God. Yeah, children are in the loins, the loins or boils of men. That's where God blesses them. He did that with Abraham. As you can see the book of Genesis 15, verse 4. Genesis 15, verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy hair, but he that shall come forth out of thine own boils shall be thy hair. Children are in uh, boils of men that is the very place where God blesses them 
So when Onan was spilling the semen on the ground, he was spilling the children that God blessed in his boils or loins. He was spilling them on the ground. So every time you are using a condom, you are spilling a child that God has blessed in your boils or loins. Yeah, this is pride before God. This is pride. How, 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 how is it that God is taking children and God is blessing those children in your loins and then you are busy uh, taking these children and pouring them and squeezing them and killing them and making them to suffocate in a plastic in a plastic paper and yet you are still calling yourself Christian and you are still calling yourself a saint there is something that you need to understand there are sins that your eyes are too blind and God wants to open to open and give you godly sorrow and repentance because you have been murdering children you have been murdering you are a murderer before God you are not a saint no you need to see these sins you need to see these sins. No murderer has eternal life. All murderers will be cast in the lake of fire. And you have been murdering. Every moment you are using these condoms, you are murdering a child. In the book of Revelation 21 verse 8, it's clear that murderers, their place is the lake of fire. So the moment you are using condom, you are a murderer. And your place is the lake of fire. Is in the lake of fire. So this is what you need to see. Genesis 15 verse 4 the, And behold the word of the Lord came unto him saying the word of the Lord came unto Abraham saying this shall not be thy hair but he that shall come forth out of thy own boils shall be thy hair as you can see God is telling Abraham a child meaning God is saying Isaac who is in your boils Ab Isaac who is in your loins will come out Isaac will come out of Abraham's loins because God has blessed Isaac in the loins of Abraham so uh, this justifies the fact that children come out of loins by God's grace it's clear God told Abraham that and God cannot lie. So let's put aside our thoughts and hold the thoughts of God. Uh, as you can see, I can use this example, but God forbid, if Abraham would have done what Onan did, of which this generation is doing consciously, constantly and continuously. If Abraham would have done that, then he would have spilled Isaac on the ground and the entire nation of Israel will be spilled also on the ground and Israel wouldn't be a nation today and Christ wouldn't come through the genealogy of Abraham. This is how serious this is how serious this uh, subject or this is how serious this sin is before God. Yeah, if Abraham would have also used maybe condom, God forbid, yeah, it is clear that the entire nation of Israel wouldn't come to existence and also Christ wouldn't come through the genealogy of Abraham. This is how serious it is when someone is using condoms or he's involved in sin of masturbation, abortion, and also other contraceptives. Yeah, the book of Matthew 1 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. As you can see, Jesus Christ is coming through the son of David and also son of of Abraham even though Jesus Christ came through the uh, power of the Holy Spirit but the Bible also indicates that the book of 
the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So if Abraham would have done what Onan did, of which this generation is doing consciously, constantly, and continuously, of which it's a wicked thing before the Lord, then it is clear that Christ will not have come through this genealogy. And Matthew chapter 1 verse 1 wouldn't have been written. And you can see how this sin affects, it affects generations. So when you spill semen on the ground or in condom before the eyes of God, you are spilling a generation. Every time also you are using these condoms before God, it's like you are suffocating. It's like you are suffocating. And it is not like it is you are suffocating a baby in a plastic bag. So you need to think about this. You need to repent and turn away from this foolishness. Turn away from these condoms. Turn away from co contraceptives. Turn away from abortions. Turn away from masturbation. The Bible is very clear in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2 God permits us in order for us to flee fornication then let every man let every man marry and have his own wife let every woman be married and have his own husband this is the only way that we can also flee fornication the book of 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2 so there is a way of fleeing from these uh, sins. Also, uh, what we need to understand uh, is that God is a faithful God. So, whatever you plant, you will harvest. God is a faithful, is a faithful God, and He will pay every and each man according to his deeds. So if you stand before God as a murderer, then God will pay you as a murderer. Even if you have been in a church, even if you are a pastor or an evangelist, even if you have thousands of churches, but you are still in this scene of using condoms and other contraceptives, then the moment you stand before God, God will not regard the churches that you have planted, the Anything that you have done, God will say that he never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. So God will repay you. If you will not repent, then God will repay you. 100% be sure of that. Yeah, just as God had blessed, just as we've seen from the book of uh Genesis chapter 15 verse 4 we saw God blessed Isaac in the loins of Abraham God uh, to blessed children today also in our loins as also God blessed children in the loins of Onan and as Onan was peeling the semen before God he was peeling children we saw about that and from what God saw, he was not pleased. He was not pleased. God also recalls that those who walk in the way of flesh, they cannot please God. So Onan was living in a way of flesh. So using condom is not a spiritual way. Using condom is a way of flesh. Just as Onan, who the Lord was not pleased with him, and the Lord killed him. So Onan was living according to the flesh. So moment you are using condoms today, whether in church or outside the church, what you need to understand, that is the way of the flesh. It's not the way of the spirit. It's not a way of the Bible. It's not biblical. The God of this book, which is the Bible, hates that sin with a perfect hatred. So moment you are involved in that sin, know consciously you are, you are against God and you are a murderer before God. So God wants us to repent. Repentance means turning away from that evil 
and forsaking that evil and casting it away. And it means that by the power of God, you are not doing it again and again. And you also hate that thing that you have been doing. You hate, you should hate these condoms, in fact. That is repentance. Turning away from those condoms and hating them. And if you find people using them, you should also preach to them with love and also rebuke uh, the sin that is in that condom. Yeah, this is repentance. This is repentance. There are also, we can read the book of uh, Hebrews 7, verse 5. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren though they come though they come out of the loins of Abraham though they come out of the loins of Abraham so children come out of the loins of men just like we can see also in the book of Hebrews 7 the book of Hebrews 7 confirms what we read in the book of Genesis chapter 15 verse, uh, verse 4. Hebrews 7 verse 5 confirms that children are blessed in loins by God and now they come forth. I will, I will read the last line. They come out of their loins of Abraham. The Levites came out of the loins of Abraham. So we can see the sin of uh, using condoms. We can see it very clearly as Onan was doing, spilling children on the ground. Even today, the devil is telling us now let's keep the environment clean and he is introducing he is introducing a plastic rubber telling us now you don't need to pour your semen on the ground let us make the environment clean just pour your semen pour your generation pour your babies kill your babies suffocate them in this rubber this is why many and even uh, thousands of churches, they think that they are right with God, but the devil has already deceived them. And with this sin in their souls, they will go to hell. With these sins in their hearts, they will still be under the wrath of God, whether they like it or they don't, because Onan is a perfect example. He was not right with God. He was under the wrath of God. So anyone who is using these things is under the wrath of God. And he is going to hell. God wants you to repent and turn from those wickedness. Turn from that wickedness. Forsake it. Yeah, God knows that a child is in the loins and he is opening, he is opening, opening his word to us. So he's we may repent and turn away from anything, anything that is close to spilling semen on the ground. Uh, one thing also we need to understand is that before a child is born, a child is in the loins and God knows this child by his, by his name. God knows this child by uh, his profession, meaning the work, God knows this child. Even before he enters in the womb, this is clear that children are in the loins of men. And when they are in the loins of men, God has already given them a name. God has already given them a purpose. So moment you are Feeling this child on the ground 
or on these rubbers that are called condoms and also contraceptives, it is clear that and very clear to your conscience that you are murdering a child who God knows by his name. Whom God knows by his name. So, in the book of Jeremiah, it's a clear picture. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Before I formed before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before the child enters in the belly or a womb of a woman, God says, I knew, I knew you. So where was this child before entering the womb? The child was in the loins of his father, the loins of Onan, the loins of Abraham, your loins and my loins. God knows our children, not after they have entered the womb of our wives, but God knows our children by their names, by their work, by their purposes that he has called them to do while they are still in our loins. So now you see the harm of using condoms. You see the harm of being involved in masturbation and other contraceptives. You see the harm of even abortion. Yeah, the harm is that you are killing a child who God knows by name and work. Then you are murdering this child. Before the child enters the belly, it's clear about that. Now, when the child enters the belly, and the child is there and someone also is tempted or she's tempted to cast this child away which means what will come out is blood In the book of genesis 9 verse 6 god is speaking about those who pour blood their blood also will be poured so moment i pour blood your blood also will be poured. That is what God said. Any man who is pouring a man's blood, his blood will be poured. So when a child goes in the belly and then someone uh, is tempted or she's tempted to do an abortion, whatever will come out is blood. So don't think that you will be innocent. Even abortion is pouring blood. So the moment you are pouring that blood, then God is saying your blood also will be poured, will be poured. God is telling Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1 verse 5, Before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee. And before thou cast, camest forth out of the belly, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto nations. So, moment we are involved in this sin of pouring semen in the ground we are pouring prophets whom god has blessed in our loins we are pouring also the work of god god is telling jeremiah i ordained thee i ordained thee a prophet unto nations so the moment you are involved in using these contraceptives and even condoms, we are pouring prophets, we are pouring the work of God, we are pouring prophecies in these prophets, we are pouring Jeremiah's, we are pouring Isaac, we are pouring the nations, the nation of, of Israel, we are pouring nations, we are pouring, we are just pouring them. Then how many nations, how many uh, generations, how many prophets, how many doctors, how many engineering engineers, how many uh, evangelists, how many apostles, how many leaders have we poured out of ignorance, out of foolishness, how many of them have we poured and squeezed them in a plastic paper called condom and contraceptives 
and abortions. Yeah, God is showing our sins. God is showing that he is so holy and we are so sinful. And the only way that God can save us is through seeing our sins, acknowledging our sin. And it is through the commandments of God that we see our sin. Exodus, thou shalt not kill. We are killers and murderers. Not only killers for one child, killers of generations. We are murderers before God. So after that, God wants us to turn away from those, those, uh, those sins, to turn away from those wickedness and cast them away, away, and not to go back again. Please, this is what God wants us to do. We are murderers before a holy God. And moment, if we die right now in this state, if we die right now, while the postures of our heart is like this, then it is clear 100% we are going to enter the lake of fire forever, forever, because of condoms. No, we need to repent. You need to turn away from these sins by God's grace. So every time you're using condoms, you are killing a generation and you are also breaking the very word that came out of the mouth of God. The book of Genesis 1, so mom, every time you are using condoms, you need to also understand that you are going against the commandment of God. The book of Genesis 1, verse 27 to 28, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Verse 28, Genesis 1 verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful. God blessed them, male and female, and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Fill the earth and subdue it. So every moment we are using condoms, we are going against the word of God. Rule over fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. The word of God is clear and open. God is telling us, God is commanding us to be fruitful and increase in number. These are the words of God. This is the commandment of God. God is saying be fruitful and increase in number. Then there is a word that is also coming from Saturn. There is a command that is coming from Saturn. God is saying be fruitful and increase in number. Saturn is saying be not fruitful and do not increase, do not increase in number, in numbers. So go for contraceptives, go for condoms, go for family plannings, go for injections, go for coils. You are going against the command of God and you are following the command of the devil. Satan is saying, be not fruitful, do not increase in numbers. God is saying, fill the earth and subdue it. Fill the earth and subdue it. The devil is saying, don't fill the earth and don't subdue it. Don't fill the earth and don't subdue it. This is the command of the devil. So, as you can see, there are two commandments. There is one, God is commanding us, and there is another commandment that is coming. This commandment, this commandment that is coming against the command of God, it's not the command of God, but it's a command from the devil. So, if you hold, if you keep the commandment of God, then it will look like you will turn away from all those contraceptives, you will turn away from using condoms, you will turn away from masturbation, you will turn away from abortion, 
You will turn away from all sexual sins that are re related to these sins that the Lord is opening to you and also to me. But holding a commandment of the devil or following the commandment of the devil, it's like you will continue. You will continue in using contraceptives. You will continue in using condoms. You will continue in abortions. This will be your lifestyle continuously. Then this means that you are living and obeying the commandment of the devil. And at the end of everything, you plus the devil, if you will not repent, God will cast both of you in the lake of fire. The book of Revelation 20 verse 10. The book of Revelation 20 verse 10. Satan, who is the devil, and also the false prophet, and also the beast, were cast in the lake of fire. And they were made to suffer day and night day and night so are you willing to suffer day and night with Satan false prophet and also the beast in the lake of fire day and night because of using a foolish thing that is a condom and God is warning you now God is giving you godly sorrow so as you may repent you may turn away from uh, those satanic things and through the gospel of Jesus Christ be saved and be cleansed and live a holy life in Christ Jesus. God is stretching forth his hand right from heaven to save you from that sin, to give you godly sorrow, to give you repentance, and to give you salvation, and be washed and cleansed from every sin that you have committed right from the womb of your mother. Until now, God wants to cleanse you. Yeah, some of the reason also which... Uh, makes men to be slaves of these condoms and uh, other contraceptives is that they love pleasure or you love pleasure than responsibility. The moment you love pleasure in your heart, then pleasure becomes an idol. Then that pleasure will continue ruling your life. It will be as a small god. That small God will command you, will rule, you will hate responsibility. The love of pleasure and the hate of responsibility is to get towards these sins of honor, which are condoms, contraceptives, abortions, and masturbations. These sins are caused by the love of pleasure and hate of responsibility. People love sex more than the commandments of God. People, uh, they also come in church. Some of them, even most of them, they have they don't have even Bibles, but in their houses, they have condoms. In their wallets, they have condoms. Then this is the generation of honor, whereby they don't have Bibles, but they have condoms. They cannot miss condoms. Then, and then the worst thing is that we believe that these men are saved and they are right with God. And also they are given responsibilities in the church. So the whole church becomes dirty no holiness, no righteousness, uh, no obedience towards the commandments of God. It's only adultery, fornications, murdering, abortions. Then the child becomes very, the church becomes very dirty. And surely there is no God there. Because without holiness, without holiness, no one will see God. Yeah, to see God physical. Yeah, praise God. And also without holiness, no one will see God. We will not even see the movement of God in the church without holiness. If the church is not holy, then we will not see the movement of God. We will not see the we will not feel the presence of God. We will not see the presence of God moving. Without holiness, no one will see. Without holiness, no one can see God. So it means that we will see God physically in heaven in holiness. And also right on earth in order for us to see the presence of God, to feel the presence of God, to see the power of God, there must be holiness. So the church needs to repent from condoms. They are not supposed to receive any condoms from any organization, even the government itself. 
which is very ignorant towards the faith of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, the church needs to open their eyes. That if the church is blind, then the entire world will also be blind. The government will also be blind. So, moment we love pleasure, it becomes an idol. And we will love adulteries and also fornication and we will be forced to go for these contraceptives and also go for condoms because uh, condoms mostly are used in sexual, immoral, sinful activities. So people love sex than the commandments of God. They hate the commandments of God. They don't believe that they are under the commandments of God. That's why Satan is using that as an advantage to bring them into bondage towards his commandment, which is go for condoms, go for lust, go for adulteries. So that is what God wants us to see. And also, one thing that you should be sure of, Christ said, and also he's telling us in the book of uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 3, and also verse 5, if we shall not repent, then we will also surely perish. If we will not repent, if we will not repent, we shall perish. So it's either we repent or we perish. There is no middle ground. It's either you turn away from condoms and other contraceptives or you enter in the lake of fire. So there is no middle ground. It's either you continue with condoms and other contraceptives and fornication and adulteries and abortions and end up in hell or it's either you turn away from them and be saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is what Christ is saying in the book of Luke chapter 13 verse uh, 3 and also verse 5. Uh, the, fear, uh, the fearful thing is that if you'll, you will not repent uh, and go on and on and on and maybe uh, you die without repenting that sin be sure this will happen. This will happen. You will go to heaven and you will find children coming to you, calling you, Mama, Mama, calling you, Father, Father, or Baba, Baba. And you will ask, who are these children? You will tell God, God, who are these children? For sure God will tell you, these are the children you murdered through condoms, through contraceptives, through masturbations, through abortions. Yeah, these are the very children that you murdered. God warned you. You knew it very well. You knew it deep in your conscience, but you call. You went on consciously, constantly, and continuously in that sin. Then these children, the children that you are pouring, they will, they will meet with you in heaven. And God will tell you, because of that sin that you did, these are the very children that you, that you killed. And then they will tell you, why mother? Why mama? Why mama? They will tell you, why baba? Why father? Why did you not let us live and have families and, and also worship our God and also maybe preach the gospel? There are some prophets you've killed through uh, that sin. They will confront you. Why? They will tell you, why were you so selfish? Why didn't you hear even when God was warning you through the scriptures? Why? They will tell you, you enjoyed life by killing us. They will tell you, you enjoyed life. You wanted pleasure. You wanted to enjoy life by killing us through using that condoms. You squeezed us and kill us so as you may find pleasure, so as you may uh, feel good in your soul. You didn't care about these children. Then what will you tell them? What will you tell these children? 
Yeah. As for me, surely I will just tell God, you are worthy to cast my soul in the lake of fire. What else can you tell these children? There is nothing. You cannot justify any sin. You cannot justify anything. Because you have been warned. God ha has been warning you through the scriptures. And you went on. You went on. You never sorrowed about the children that you've murdered. And then you went on consciously, constantly, continuously. Then you will meet these children in heaven. And you will be speechless. You will be speechless. And you will see how worthy God is to cast your soul in the lake of fire. So before that happens, God wants you to repent. God wants you to turn away from every, every sin. Why should you be so selfish? Why? Why live such a life? Some people, are maybe it's also you. You have this hatred when people uh, grab uh, maybe money or they grab an inheritance and then they kill at the person who have been given that inheritance. Uh, your heart is usually disturbed and you are ready to accuse these murderers. But one thing that you need to see, if you are using even condoms, then you are a hypocrite. Yeah, you hate people who kill other people for properties, to, uh, to earn those properties or to steal from them. Also, you need to see the sin that uh, the foundations of your sex happiness is built in blood of innocent babies. Every time you are involved in using these condoms, contraceptives, or you are involved in masturbation and also abortion. Every time you are involved in these sins, then it's like you are using uh, uh, the, the blood, the blood of babies to build a wall. You know a wall? It's like you're using babies. You're using your babies and the blood of babies. You're using your, your babies to build a wall, a wall of your sex happiness. Then how, how selfish are you? How selfish, how evil are you before God? You're using children, a child before a child, a child upon a child, a child upon a child, a child. You are using them as stones to build a sex happiness, to build a pleasure that makes you happy. Every time you are using condoms, this is what you are doing in a spiritual world. Then will you continue using these contraceptives? God will honor the son of Judah and he will do the same. He will not change his measure. His measurement, he will do the same to all who are practicing Onan's evil, God will repay them as he did to Onan. For if God will not repay Onan, for if God, sorry, if God will not repay, repay you as he repaid Onan, then God will be guilty of favorism. And we know that in God there is no sin. So we know 100% that God will repay everyone just as he repaid Onan. The fact that is very clear and evidence that God must take your soul in hell is that God did with Onan. So if he will not do with you of which you are in the same same sin, then God will be guilty. Of favorism and we know there is no sin in God there is no darkness in God so God has to cast your soul unless you repent you need to repent the book of Ezekiel Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30 to 31 this is what you need to do the book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30 to 31 therefore i will judge you o house of israel everyone according to his ways said the lord 
repent repent the lord is commanding you repent what is to repent repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin repent repentance mean repentance means you need to turn away from all your transgressions the condoms that you have been using you need to turn away from them the contraceptives the abortions the masturbations you need to turn away from them this is what the lord is commanding you if you will not turn away god will cast your soul in hell cast away from you all your transgressions god is saying cast away all the condoms burn them cast away all the condoms cast away all your transgressions whereby you have transgressed and make you a new heart god wants to make a new heart in your soul not heart that is enslaved to condoms and contraceptives abortion and masturbations but a new heart the heart of christ and a new spirit for why will you die why will you die O house of israel why will you die repent and turn away from all your condoms contraceptives abortions masturbations and all sins you need to confess them before god you need to confess every sin that is in your mind every sin that you can recall you need to confess it before god and see that god he is drawing your soul to christ see uh, the wrath of god see the judgments of god and may the lord make you see the love of God and save your soul. You need to turn away. You need to repent and forsake them and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And through that gospel, there is the power of God that will give your soul godly sorrow, will give your soul repentance, turning you away from all, all sins, not only the sins that have been mentioned here, but all, all type of sins, may it be, and then God will give you salvation as a gift. And by that you need to live a holy life. Seek for a biblical church or a biblical fellowship and grow in the glory of God. May God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord, may you have mercy, O Lord, upon each and every one, Father, who has been a slave, O God, in using of condoms, Father, masturbation, O Lord, and also abortions, O Father, please, O God, and also any kind, O Lord. Lord, you have shown us our sin, Lord. You have shown us, you have shown them their sins, O oh God. May you give them power, Lord. You are the one who uh, draws souls to Christ. So as they may receive forgiveness, repent, repentance and forgiveness of sins. Let it be, O oh God. Have mercy upon this generation, Father. Have mercy upon the children, O oh Father that have been murdered, O oh Lord, through these contraceptives, O oh Father. May you help us, Father. Give us understanding, Father. May you give men repentance, Father. Let them see, Father, the hatred that is in your soul, Father. Let them see the wrath, Father, that is in your soul, Father. Get us all this wickedness, O oh God. Please, O oh Lord, may you search their hearts with your light, O oh God, so as they may see the wicked plans, they may see their wickedness, O oh Lord, and be saved, Father. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Forgive us the sins, Father, of delinquency, Father, the sin of presumption, Lord, the sin of ignorance, O oh Father. May you wash us, Father, through the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray, trusting and believing. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. 
Amen. May the Lord have mercy.